What's Rob? Welcome to Axel's Garage. Alright, so like any good car guy, you have a vehicle that you use and abuse on a regular basis. It's your old reliable go-to. It might be a little beat up and worn out, but it's your go-to vehicle. And for us, it's a Suburban. And this is an 03 Suburban. It's got 180, 190,000 miles on it. It's been through family vacations, trips, um, lumber yard pickups, sporting events, everything you could think of, and it's we really have driven the wheels off of it, and we've done a lot of maintenance to it over the years. Um, the only major issue with it thus far, not good, is the transmission that went a few years ago, and we had to get the transmission rebuilt. But the thing is, is just a brick shit house. It really is um, starting to get a little rot in the rockers, so the rockers are starting to rot, rot out on us. But anyway, um, had a check engine light on and off over the last year and now it's time to get it inspected and here where we live in New York we got to do emissions even on something this old in 2003 and to do the emissions you can't have a check engine light on and all of your monitors have to be in and I, I believe 2001 is the year where either 2001 or prior to 2001 so it's either 2001 and prior or prior to 2001 you could have one monitor out so we uh, we hooked up the uh, the scan tool and it's showing us a bad oxygen sensor it's saying no no activity whatsoever to an oxygen sensor which could be the sensor going bad or the wiring to the sensor going bad it's usually the sensor unless something odd has happened it's usually not the wiring and it's the sensor that actually went bad so um, the other thing is that we do have a problem with this vehicle and if you've been watching for a while getting all the monitors to come in after you reset them and it's that evap just hangs forever and I believe is it the cat the cat and the evap hang forever so what I did was I saw the inspection was expiring the end of January so I reset the codes the check engine light didn't come on we drove it a couple days looked at it and cat evap still not coming in it had a pending code for that O2 sensor but it hadn't tripped the check engine light yet so I said alright let's drive it a couple more days see what happens couple more days we drove it still ain't coming in so I still can't get it inspected um, and now it's the end of the month has passed we're a couple days into February and I need to get this thing inspected and those codes aren't coming back in and I know what I'm gonna have to do the same thing I had to do last year to get inspected and like I said if you've been watching for a while you know I'm gonna have to unplug the battery leave the battery unplugged for a little bit and then it seems like those those monitors come back in uh, for some reason it who knows why but it seems the only way I can get those monitors all to come in is by unhooking the battery. So, in the meantime, we got to do this O2 sensor so that everything will come in. And I ordered one on Amazon, link in the description, for the, the brand name. Of the, this is a little annoying because I did order a brand name O2 sensor. They had a bunch to choose from off brands, but I wanted, you know, a Bosch or a, or a Denso. And I don't even remember which one I offered, but it came in a bubble wrap envelope and then I pull it out and it's not even in a box so I don't even know if I got the brand name one that I was it says it said you can see right here hassle free packaging it says Ziploc bag and I don't see any indication on it of a brand name I got some numbers on it I mean there there is a part number on it I guess I could google up that part number and see but I'm hoping it's the brand name one that I that I chose and what we're going to do is, I'm going to plug the scan tool in now so I can show you the code I'm getting. And, and then we're going to go through the, the process of, of changing it. And it's, it's pretty easy. What I will do is, while we're changing it, I'll disconnect the battery this way. Hopefully driving it. Uh, today we got a couple errands to run. And then uh, and tonight we'll put a couple miles on it. Hopefully it'll be good for the morning. And I can get it inspected and not have to worry about getting a ticket from the parking enforcement people around here. All right, so with my ignition on and my scan tool plugged in, you can see uh, my monitors. I am still out after a week or so of driving. I'm still out on the EVAP, still out on the CAT. So if we go to the, the standard reading, I don't have a check engine light on, but you'll see I'll have a pending code um, for that O2 sensor. You can see codes found zero, right? But if I go to read codes and I go to pending codes oh, it's not giving me a pending code oh. 
So it's not even giving me the pending code this time since I reset it last, which was about a week ago. Um, but the, the code that it was spitting out and the pending code was uh, Bank One Sensor One, which is the driver's side upstream, so it's before the cat. Sensor one before the cat, sensor two after the cat, um, on a, uh, a V8 mounted the traditional way. The uh, bank one is going to be on your driver's side where the number one cylinder is, and bank two is going to be on the passenger side where your number two cylinder is. And that's, uh, I, I guess, that's Chevy's. I don't know if you know what other make and models uh, that covers, but GM vehicles that's the way they usually uh, run them. So we're going to replace that upstream before the CAT O2 sensor. That's the one we bought here. I'm pretty sure for this vehicle, all four O2 sensors are exactly the same, up, down, and either side. So you just make sure you're replacing the right one. The code did say uh, no voltage, no signal, no anything to the, uh, to the oxygen sensor. So that should be it. The vehicle's warm. It's not totally hot because it would be a bitch to change it. Hopefully... There was some good anti-seize applied to the one that was put in there whenever it was put in there. And I believe there was because we replaced the um, the engine. We replaced the cats on this, which is that whole engine pipe. So there should be anti-seize on that one. So it should come out without too much of a, of a hassle. And now what I'll do is I'll disconnect the battery while we do this to sort of get those codes to hopefully reset and come back in all the monitors so we can get this thing. All right, so under the vehicle, you can see right here, right between the cat and the uh, where the manifold connects to the engine pipe you got the sensor it's in an easy location to get the sensor off just make sure when you're doing it that when you screw the new one in actually that you don't twist those wires up on the old one and then it connects way up over there which is a little bit of a, a difficult squeeze to get in and then um, just use a cable tie or something to make sure those wires are out of the way of anything hot or anything where they're going to chafe because you don't want the, the wires to get all messed up. All right, so I don't know how well that actually came out under the vehicle. I think when I was taking the old one out, I didn't hit record. I don't know what happened. But I definitely got a shot of the new one in. Here's the old oxygen sensor. Now, when you're taking it out, you can cut these wires right off and just put a socket on it if you want. Um, in this particular application, it was easy to go in there with an open end wrench. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your harness apart first because this has got to spin with it as you're spinning it off. And a 7 8 wrench fits on them. I think it's actually a 22 millimeter is supposed to be, but a 7 8 wrench works. I don't have a 22 millimeter open end and I always use a 7 8 and that seems to work. Um, came out nice and easy because there was NICs on the threads and then you just, you know, make sure you get your wire on. Now, when you put your new one in, again, make sure there's any C's. If not, it, they usually come with a little bit on it, and sometimes they're a little stingy. So I like to add a little bit on there, just a little bit. Make sure you don't get it on the sensor, just on the threads, right? And then when you screw it in, make sure that as you screw it in by hand, that you're letting the wire turn. You're not binding this wire anyway, because you don't want to damage the wire where it goes into the connector. You see how this one's a little, a little twisted? That's probably because when they were putting it in, it kind of twisted like that and got tight. Um, so you make sure it's nice, going in nice, and then once you get it seated, give it a good snug with the wrench. It doesn't have to be crazy tight, just a good and tight, just a good snug, and then connect your wires. If you can, um, you know, plug it back into the original spot where it was. If not, use a couple cable ties, one, two, three, however many you got to use. We had to use one. But however many cable ties you got to use to keep this out of the way of any moving parts or any excessive heat so that you don't damage the wires going to it. Because if you damage the wires going to the sensor, the sensor's bad. Um, now we got our battery unplugged so we could reconnect our battery and hopefully drive it uh, the remainder of the next day or two. And maybe those all those monitors will come in and we can get it inspected. Link for the oxygen sensor in the description below. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did... Give us that thumbs up, and if you like what we're doing here at Axel's Garage, our, our, our excessive talking, because the comments are ridiculous lately with, uh, with the video starts at 4.32, you know, like, yeah, we talk here. This is, this is a, a family channel. We talk about our family, we talk about our cars, we talk about our hobbies, we talk about all our shit, I get the kids involved, and we try to have a little fun with it. So, uh, appreciate the channel. Um, if you're new, welcome to the channel, because this is what we do. We talk a lot. And uh, if you like what we're doing here, hit that subscribe button and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us continue to bring you the things that you like to see. Thanks for watching.